Hey guys, I'm Rishi K and this is the Indian Logs. Today in this video, we're going to look at the Maximus 9 Hero motherboard from Asus itself. So without any further ado, let me roll the intro and let's get to the video itself. Let's begin. Keep in mind guys, this is going to be a really long video if I keep it in a single video because it will go about 40 to 50 minutes long. So yes, I'm going to split this video in about two or three parts max. So yes, the first will cover up the, all the general things. The next ones will go into more advanced details. Before taking a look at the review itself, let's take a look at what else we have in the package itself. Package wise, we have a user's guide. We also have a driver CD, but you should not use it. Instead, download the latest drivers from Asus website. We also have four SATA data cables. Two of them are right angle and two of them are straight angle. Next thing we have is a rear IO panel followed by the nuts that are used for PCIe Express SSDs and also the 3D mount that is provided from Asus itself. We'll talk about it later. We also have a ROG branded SLI high bandwidth bridge provided, a RGB LED extension cord which is really long, a Q connector, a CPU installer with a user's guide which is a really good thing, followed by some stickers for SATA data, some cable mode coupons, some T coasters and a lot of ROG branded stickers which is a really good thing. So let's begin the review of the Maximus 9 Hero motherboard from Asus itself. It has a socket 1151 which supports Intel 6th and 7th generation that is the Skylake and the KB Lake series CPUs including the i7s, i5s, i3s, Pentiums and Celeron CPUs. Now the CPU architecture supported by this motherboard is 14 nanometers itself. The board has 4 DIMM slots which supports DDR4 RAMs up to 4000 MHz overclocked which is a non-ECC memory and it supports dual channel with XMP enabled. Now expansion wise it has two PCIe Express 16x slots which are directly hardwired to the CPU itself. One PCI 16 slot at the very bottom supported by the Z270 chipset. Furthermore it has three PCIe 1x slots and yes this is also controlled by the Z270 chipset itself. Now for GPU configuration you can either put one GPU which will run at 16x speeds if you want to put two GPUs, it will run at 8x, 8x speeds. So now that we are on the GPUs topic, yes, the integrated GPU out in here is the 630 series Intel integrated graphics. Nothing to brag about, but yes, it does support multi displays and it has ports like DP 1.2 and HDMI 1.4B, which can support 4K maximum up to 60 frames per second and 24 frames per second respectively. Now the storage wise, it has a RAID 0, 1, 5, 10, an Intel RST14 support included in the chipset as well. Now it has two M.2 slots. The high one supports SATA and PCI Express SSDs, whereas the lower one is supporting the PCI only SSDs. Now talking more about the storage itself, it has six SATA 6 gigabits per second ports on the right side of the board. And yes, this supports Intel Optane technology. And yes, a video will be coming soon if you guys want it for Intel Optane technology. So let me know in the comment section below, I'll make a video about that. Now let's look at the back panel of the motherboard and let's see what IO we get from the motherboard itself. Stating from the top to the bottom, we have a clear CMOS switch, BIOS flashback switch, a M.2 Wi-Fi slot to add additional Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality to the motherboard which is not provided in the box, one HDMI 1.4B, one DP 1.2, four USB 2.0, four USB 3.0, 1 gigabit Intel LAN which also supports anti-search technology. There are two USB 3.1 ports, one of them is a type A and the other one is a type C port. At the end of it all, we have one SPDIF optical out and a 8 channel gold plated audio connectors which is supported by a high definition DAC that is ES9023P. And yes, this DAC is really awesome. I have played with it. Great thing, we'll talk about it later. So this board is a ROG board, right? What features does the ROG board have which the other boards don't provide? Now the ROG features include great quality chokes, MOSFETs and plaque capacitors which will improve the lifespan of the motherboard so that is a really good thing for the stability of the overclock also. So this board is mainly focused for overclocking and getting your performance out of the CPU as much as you can with greater stability because of all of these features. So let's see what else we have. We have a start, reset, save boot, retry, BIOS flashback, 
clear CMOS, MEM OK buttons, LN2 modes, ROG RAM disk, clone drives, RAM cache, keyboard. Now few of them are hardware features and few of them are software features. We'll discuss it later. And yes, there are more BIOS features that we'll see in the later part of the video. So now let's come to the audio part itself that we talked a few minutes back. It has a 32-bit capable audio DAC which supports up to 192 kHz of frequencies. It has impedance sense on the front and the back side of the motherboard itself for judging your headphones and accordingly optimizing the audio to your headphones. So, so a high quality DAC is provided in the motherboard itself. It has Supreme FX shielding which means that the audio components are separated electrically and insulated from them so as to reduce the background noise and the noise floor itself. The most amazing feature of this board in terms of audio is that yes it does support 32 bit audio analog output but yes that is not the great part about this board. Let me tell you what it is. The main thing that I like personally is the multi streaming capability. Now this is supported by the Sonic Studio software that is Asus provides, enabling you guys to stream multiple audio sources to multiple devices from the same PC itself. So for example, if you want to stream the Chrome web page or like a video from the Chrome web browser to the TV that is nearby that is connected to the PC, you can do that while editing on your desk itself. So that is a really good thing and I think multitaskers and people who have this PC set up as a family PC would highly benefit from this feature of the board itself. So that out of the way, let's talk about the internal ports that is the headers that this board has. Now there are many standard headers out in here and we'll just brush up quickly through it. So let's begin. Starting from the bottom of the board itself, it has a front panel connector for the buttons and speakers. The RGB extension header that will help you to connect RGB LED strips for case lighting and all. There is a chassis fan 3, there is thermal sensors, USB connectors along with the ROG extension connector. USB 3.0 front panel header, TPM connector, LN2 mode jumper, slow mode switch, a retry button, save boot button, a reset button and the most important out of all of these is a start button. Yes, that's a really well built button. I love that one. Also there is a Thunderbolt header out in there and a front panel audio connector as usual. Now let's come to the right side of the board itself going from the down to the up. So the most important feature that this board offers apart from all the other boards in the market is a water in out sensor reading directly on the motherboard. So has a water flow connector, which is a really good thing for water cooler enthusiast people. There are fan headers, there are separate fan headers for water pump and a chassis fan too. There are six data ports as we mentioned earlier. There is a hard drive activity LED. There's also a high amperage fan header for all the pumps that are heavy and draw a lot of power through the motherboard's fan header. If you connect that to a normal fan header that might burn off but yes this is a high amperage fan header so that's not an issue for that. Next to that we have an internal USB 3.1 10 gigabits per second internal USB header which is a really great thing because the case manufacturers will now start implementing all the USB 3.1 headers into their cases. It's a 24 pin ATX power connector and above it is the memory OK button. Between this there is a slot that I told you before for the 3D mount that Asus has provided the 3D mounting and you can just print out the 3D mounts and attach it to your motherboard for more added effects and more protection and bling I guess. So yes, let's go to the top of the motherboard itself. On the top of that, there's Q code debug LED. There is one more RGB header. There are three fan connectors, two of CPU, and then there is a one more AIO fan header. So there are a lot of fan headers. And yes, there is most important of all, EATX 12 volt 8 pin power connector for the CPU. So these are all the internal headers that this motherboard has. Anyways guys, this was it for this video. This was just for all the information that this board supports and all. The next video will be about the BIOS, overclocking features, extra features. This video will be coming out tomorrow itself. So yes, so this was it for the part one of this video guys. Uh, I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below if you need any doubts or need to ask any questions. And until next time, this is Rishi K. Tell me unlocks. Signing off for the moment. I hope you unlock something today. Have a nice day. Bye bye.